everyone, welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be on user input. Obviously the first step is to have some sort of IDE. I use IntelliJ, but of course I will link some in the description that are free that you can download and some ones that I started off with. I started off with BlueJ, but if you want to um, use a different one, feel free to click any of the links below. I will place a lot of popular ones. Okay, so I already created my project and I named it User Input Tutorial. Um, I'm also going to change the name of my class into something that is related to the program itself. I think that's really important. So I'm just going to rename uh, User Input. As you can see, we have our class called User Input and we have our main method where our program is going to run. So first, before we start, let me explain the purpose of User Input and why we use it. Basically, getting user input allows the user to interact with the program itself. Instead of having a program print out numbers or simple lines of text, you can prompt the user to enter something, like a number or a line of text, or even a character, and place what they entered into a variable, and code the program to do something with that variable that contains what they entered, and do something with it. If you have no education on variables, I recommend you check out my last video. I explain what they're for, what they do. Pretty much it's a really, really easy concept, so feel free to watch my previous video. You need to understand the concept of variables and how they work to be able to get user input. So step one of this tutorial is to import a scanner class. And you might not know what that means, but I will show you how to do it. Basically what this does is it gives us methods that allow us to take user input and also take different types of user input like int or string like I mentioned in the previous tutorial. So we're just going import, to import the scanner class. Import java util scanner. And then end with the semicolon. And this right here gives us access to the scanner class. The next step is to create a scanner object. And you might not be understanding these terms. And let me explain to you what an object is. So basically to be able to use methods and variables from a different class, you need to create an object of that class. Basically an object just represents another class and it allows us to gain access to it. You can't just call methods without having some sort of object that will help you invoke that, invoke that method. So to create an object, you need to state the class's name. So the class is called Scanner. You can make up your variable name, it's no different than creating a variable basically, but except this is an object. And the name can be anything you want, I will call it. Um, scanner object make equal sign and then you state new stating that this is a new object new scanner Jesus my phone keeps ringing new scanner and then here you will type in system.in which is what allows us to get input and you end with a semicolon that is how you create a scanner object there are different ways to create objects but overall an object just allows you to get access to a different class Okay, so now we have our object, and honestly, the third step is just to prompt the user to enter something. Whenever you're using Scanner, you need some sort of prompt, something that'll explain to the user, hey, this is what you need to enter. So, for this example, I'm just going to ask the user to enter two numbers, and then we can code the program to add the two numbers together or to multiply them. So, first we create our prompt. System.out.print. Enter two numbers. Okay, now we have created our prompt, which will output to the console, enter two numbers. But the user needs to enter a number somehow. If I don't put a variable here that will take in what they enter, basically the console is just going to say enter two numbers, and then that's the end of the program. It's not going to actually take in some type of input. So, to take in that input, we need to create a variable that will also invoke the method that will take in and hold that specific data type that we're asking for. We're asking the user to enter two numbers, meaning we are using an int data type. So we, use, we will say int user input, this variable name can be whatever you would like it to be, equals, now it's time to call the scanner object, scanner object, which gives us access to the scanner class, dot next int. Next int means that the user is going to enter an integer. As you can see, if you look at all these methods, they have different ones. They have next, which just takes in a string. You can see the data types on the side here. Um, this one means next line, so this will take in a line of text, which is, which is also a string. Next long, which is an integer type. Next bit, which is also a number. Next byte. Short is also a number. They can take in big decimals, big integers. Boolean, which is just true or false. 
double, which is decimal numbers, they can take in different things. Basically, like I said, the scanner object just gives you access to all these methods that are in the scanner class. These are all inside of the scanner class. So right now we're going to use next int because we're trying to take in two integers. So since we want the user to enter two numbers, we have to create two variables that will hold those two numbers. There are other ways to, you can create what is called an array that will carry more than one number, but that is something that's going to be discussed in a future tutorial. So let's create another variable called user input two. You can't create two of the same variables. And we are also going to call this scanner object again. Next int. And now we can carry two integers. Now, what do you want to do with these integers? For today, just to keep things simple, we're just going to add these two integers together. So what you're going to do is you can either A, create another variable that will hold these two integers added together, and then we can do a sys out that will output the, the final, like the total or whatever, or we can do a system out and then just simply say user input plus user input two, which is really simple. And this will add the two together and print it out. So let's run the program. Okay, it says enter two numbers, it worked right. So I'm just gonna enter the number five and four. And it outputted nine, the program went through. That was a really, really easy, simple program. Let's try multiplying the numbers because we can do that. So I'm gonna change this plus sign into a enter two numbers. I will do 10 and eight. And then the answer is 80. There's another way you can do this without printing literally the two variables into a sys out. You can place it into another variable and I can call this variable int total and set that equal to user input times user input two. And it should work the same. Four times four, 16. Cool, it worked. So that is how you get user input. This is my sort of beginner tutorial. There's obviously more things that you can do. You can do a variety of things, but this just overall gives you an understanding of what user input's for, how to use it, and why it's honestly awesome. Because I can take whatever user inputs into a console and do just about anything I can think of with it. Anyways, that is the end of my tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you are confused about anything, specifically comment below and I will try to answer your question. I will also paste some sources into the description that you can look into on your, on your own time if you want to do your own research and learn a tad bit more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. If you want any future tutorials, please comment them below. And that'll be all for today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.